प्लीज स्टार्ट मैम प्लीज स्टार्ट ओके सर गुड मॉर्निंग एवरीवन ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ एमिटी इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ फार्मेसी एमिटी यूनिवर्सिटी नोएडा अ वेरी वॉम वेलकम टू यू ऑल टू दी वेबिनार ऑन एपीजेनेटिक इन्वॉल्वमेंट इन न्यूरोपैथिक पेन वी आर ग्रेटफुल एंड थैंकफुल टू दी इंस्पायरिंग लीडर्स ऑफ आर यूनिवर्सिटी ऑनरेबल फाउंडर प्रेजिडेंट सर डॉक्टर अशोक के चौहान ऑनरेबल चांसलर सर डॉक्टर अतुल चौहान and respected vice chancellor ma'am dr balvinder shukla for stimulating us to learn and improve in our endeavors the esteemed panelists for this session are dr gt kulkarni professor and joint head amity institute of pharmacy dr tanveer nave associate professor and joint head amity institute of pharmacy and dr sangeeta gupta assistant professor amity institute of pharmacy It is indeed a pleasure for me to welcome the speaker for today's session, Mr. Shubhranshu Praharaj. Mr. Praharaj is currently working as the senior research scientist at the Jubilant Biosys Bangalore. Prior to Jubilant, he worked as a research associate at Glenmark Research Center in Mumbai. His area of interest is preclinical research, and his responsibilities include conducting and managing independently discovery and FFS programs. project proposal costing pkpd uh, pkpd correlation model development and biomarker identification and validation design of appropriate target engagement acute study functional in vitro and in vivo assays in plain inflammation and neuroscience division he has received several awards some of which are emerging manager award in the year 2017 chairman's annual award in recognition of discovering a novel first in class oral antibiotic preclinical drug candidate which was the milestone for the company he has also received best team award in 3 years 2008 2010 and 2018 and has received the best scientist award in 2010 he also has several research publication to his credit i now request mr praraj to talk, start his talk yeah good morning everyone uh, so very uh, thank you uh, dr suti and dr sangeeta and the, all the faculty members for a nice you know uh, summary for 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 my descriptions so is a, is a uh, thank you everyone uh, who joined this webinar and uh, in fact i am my uh, sincere uh, gratitude to all the faculty members of the university uh, for giving this you know, kind of opportunity in fact this is a uh, very encouraging uh, you know uh, for the young scientists in the academics to uh, understand more about what is happening in the industry and also vice versa for us also what is happening in the industry so this is a very you know mutual agreement like, mutual kind of collaboration is required uh, to to improve our scientific knowledge and in this uh, you know, r&d especially in this present era Uh, so my one request to everyone is please stop me i will be happy to you know uh, during this presentation at any point of time so that uh, i will be happy to address any questions in between so let us uh, you know be interactive in this, in this during this session uh, so so yeah i'll i'll start to i'll come to my uh, topic this epigenetic involvement in neuropathic pain so i'll go very briefly what is you know to remember to to recall our Uh, uh this uh, dna double helix we know is a right from the very beginning that this dna is a double helical structure and uh, this in which this arginine and guanine are the purine based and uh, the cytosine and thiamine are the pyrimidine based and you know that this guanine triple bond binded with a uh, uh, cytosine and this thiamine is binded with the arginine so this is our uh, basic knowledge about this dna double helix so then how how it is you know how epigenetic mechanism plays uh, play in 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 the field of neuropathic pain that i'll come to our main in my next you know ppt uh, slide so i used the term epigenetics the, the term epigenetics refers that there is a heritable changes in gene function without changes in the dna sequence that that means the gcc atp whatever the sequence it will not change it will remain same but the changes in the gene or the protein it will be mutated because of some reason the reason may be environment toxins the way you know this uh, toxins in the environment and this uh, long medications and uh, because of our irregular diet and unbalanced diet and in fact the stress you know this is a very common nowadays the stress is you know because 
some sometimes we cannot stop it is unstoppable you know because of any reason you know, professionally personally because of some economic burden so that stress will be remain there and because of that there will be changes in this epigenetics process so that maybe this as you, as you, as you saw in the figure that this uh, this guanine or something or cytosine or whatever it will be methylated means the sequence will be there but in the addition of methyl will be methyl will be added to that so that will create a you know disease state it may be cancer it may be you know alzheimer's disease some place formation or sometimes it may be uh, some uh, uh, stress like you know obesity so but my uh, in during the session i will be more focusing towards neuropathic pain because my inclination always towards you know <laughs> uh, neuroscience uh, area uh, so uh, i'll i'll go to the next i used the term that neuropathic pain you know in my topic so this neuropathic pain is uh, nothing but uh, you know why it is required why it is a you know, focus area from the last uh, few years so if you look at this uh, america's uh, you know this uh, pie chart 116 million people are still you know under this neuropathic pain conditions in if you compare to the other cancer 14.7 million and in heart diseases there are only 25.4 million and if, if you look at the diabetes it is only 30.3 million so in my, if you if you add this all this three that is also less in comparison to pain so even it, it, i i saw a report that they have measured that they have said that in few uh, 70% of populations in uh, india they have the pain and they have uh, they they don't know what to do with that pain and, and they have acclimatized to the pain and they thought that that is the that is probably the life uh, one of the uh, it, it will go along with the life so that means we are acquainted we are we are acclimatized to the pain that we are, so that kind of people also they are in the uh, society so now comes the how is it that this what about the analgesic or pain killers available in the market nowadays is that sufficient the report says that more than 2/3 of the neuropathic pain patients do not have sufficient pain relief and the painful conditions may be because of rheumatoid arthritis peripheral neuropathy like you know diabetic patients who suffer diabetes more than glucose you know 450 to 500 mg per dl for for a few years they may start uh, foot ulcers as well as some diabetic neuropathy in the uh, you know in any any uh, finger tips or in the toe tips or whatever and we have cancer pain in fact everybody knows that and idiopathic pain sometimes you don't know from where the pain is coming so that kind of pain also there so we don't even sometimes we ignore it so that is also there so may, which may which may persist for years uh yes in the market some answers are there like you know celecoxy diclofenac etrodolac and ibuprofen they are there in the market but we 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 everybody know that how uh, it has the effect on liver toxicity kidney toxicity every every uh, you know uh, after few few months taking or after few years this may happen so we don't know what is happening inside our body so that is the limitations even though it is in the market we have the limitations for that even a uh, few days back this nimflite has been withdrawn for from the market because of the same reason so opiate is also in the, is in the market but it is, is a very good uh, you know analysis but uh, this morphine codeine fentanyl which is opiate category they are in the market but they have the major problems the addiction and the you know tolerance so to get that means to get same efficacy this more dose is required for the addiction for the tolerance so again it has or limitations that is it will decrease the respiration and uh, it will decrease the uh, gi mortality so in fact in our lab we have seen that uh, you know so if you create pain in the animals uh, in the mice or yeah in the mice or rat so uh, that first day suppose at morphine doses you have given 2.5 mg a subcutaneous if you get 70% inhibition after few tests at least even if after 5 days the Uh, percentage inhibition has been reduced to only 10%. That means morphine has a uh, tolerance effect. That the pain, that means the dose of two, uh, uh, morphine, what is 2.5 mg subcutaneous earlier shown 70% effect. Now it has been goes up to 7.5 or 10% to get the same kind of efficacy. That means opioids have tolerance effect under neuropathic pain condition. That is very well known, well well measured. So that that is the reason why we have to focus. now in the more in the neuropathic pain as well as the proteins responsible for the pain so the in the topic the next 
comes is neuropathic pain and it drug administration why i focus in intrathecal drug administration is earlier in the you can get the animals total knockout now not now means researchers have focused on how to knock out in a particular site suppose your site is uh, l4 l5 or uh, whatever the lumbar region so knock out that protein in the particular region so how it is possible so it is possible via intrathecal drug administration so i will just shortly very very briefly i'll uh, go uh, the neuropathic pain how we create in the animals so there are a lot of you you you, you all aware of that that uh, snl uh, spinal nerve vibration which is called as uh, chunks model and cci chronic constriction injury model that is benedek model and psni uh, partial for uh, partial uh, spared nerve injury model and the uh, sni spared nerve injury model so these are all neuropathic pain models very well known and very well reported in every article so i'll very very shortly i'll go through this so you can see this cartoon uh, which is in the left in the uh, slide number 6 so uh, this l4 l5 and l6 they are, they are the major who has you know who has uh, 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 extended towards the thigh region to get sighting nerve right to deform the sighting nerve so if you cut this l5 nerve and the l6 nerve that you are creating spinal nerve transduction model right if you navigate l5 and l6 with suture from it uh, that is uh, ethical suture black thread 50 that means you are creating spinal nerve ligation model that means l5 and l6 is ligated okay so that in that during you know within 3 to after 3 days you can get the uh, animals uh, very severely uh, pain conditions so as i said that l4 and l5 l6 extend to uh, create sighting nerve to form sighting nerve so then that is called cci that is chronic constriction injury model that in the sighting nerve you will put four chromic catgut this chromic catgut is nothing but this is a uh, this is made from this uh, uh, this got of intestine, intestine of uh, purified collagen from the sub mucosal layer of uh, this small intestine of sheep or goat whatever so that is uh, if you put for threads very close to the one mm is to each other it will create an inflammation you know as the antigen it is made up of some uh, small intestine of the sheep that is antigen so it will create you know uh, you know uh, antigen uh, so again uh, antibody within the animals in uh, body so it will create inflammation so in the first few during, uh, during few days the pain is called as uh, neuropathic uh, pain but it, in, it includes inflammatory neuropathic pain later on it, it will convert it to neuropathic pain but this pain will be continue for you know one month to two month there is no issue at all so another model is sni spared nerve injury what happened in that is again the sighting nerve will try for cat to common peroneal tibial and sural this in this the sural will be intact that means the sural nerve will be as such you have to cut the tibial as well as common peroneal because there there will be no regeneration why the sural nerve is not cutting is we do we don't we do not talk about this because it will be uh, it will be helping the animals to movement you know for locomotion otherwise there will be paral- there will be chances of paralysis even in the even in snl you are not supposed to touch this l5 uh, and uh, l sorry l4 because this l4 uh, is below uh, sorry l5 is below l4 is just just above the l5 uh, l5 so you are very 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 tactfully you have to uh, isolate this l4 from the l5 and Tie the L5. If you touch by mistake to the L4, also there will be chances of you know paralysis in the hind leg of the animal. So my intention of uh, putting in this uh, uh, this slides in this is just to give a flavor, uh, to give a flavor that how this neuropathic pain condition is created in the laboratory. So now I'll uh, well use uh, during my session I'll use another word that is intrathecal root. The intrathecal root, as you know, that we have to put this the, near the L6. near the l6 there is a transverse process it's a bone very small delicate bone so if you just cross it and if you just give a small hole with any needle so you can pass the p10 tubing to the l4 and l5 region what about the region but it will one to one five if you uh, from there uh, if, the, if your body weight is animals body weight is 220 gram and if you put one to 1.5 cm of this uh, p10 tubing to the l6 to the l4 l5 region it will be very you know clearly it will reach that region my my intention of telling this is so it means if your uh, target of protein 
if you target the protein is in this region in the spinal cord this l4 l5 region you can uh, knock down by giving the another another antagonist protein okay so th this will be helpful this will be helpful to create an siRNA technique or create any some antibodies or some you know peptides you can administer by this intrathecal route and uh, in fact it is a very easy and uh, but laborious yeah i agree and uh, it is a, you know very in fact it is very uh, laborious as well as some cost wise also you know more cost is required but uh, it is a, it is a, it is very uh, to create a local uh, or create local knockdown of any protein, it will be helpful. So now I'll go to the next slide, slide number seven. So in this, during this session, I'll be talking more about uh, this, as I said, this is epigenetic thyroid. So DNA methylation, it is a protein spark, and histone methylation, it is a, another protein. So I'll, I'll very briefly talk about these three proteins. And another one is histone acetylation, which is, which is Saha. So I'll go through these three proteins during this uh, uh, session, another, uh, few few slides. So I, I I told the DNA methylation. So then, as you heard from this uh, word itself, is the methylation is addition of methyl, right? So the cytosine, which is present in the DNA, so this cytosine will be methylated, you know, uh, in presence of uh, SA means S adenosyl methionine will be converted to S adenosyl homocysteine. That means methyl group is added in presence of D and methyl transferase. So that methyl group is added to the five positions of this ring, cytosine ring, which is called as high methyl cytosine. So that will be, uh, that is the major uh, uh, changes in the gene expression, right? As uh, this high methyl has been changed with the methylation, methyl will be added. So leading to chronic diseases such as obesity, fatigue, and neurological and mental disorders. So I will go to the slide number nine, so which speaks about how this path protein, I, I said that because the methylation, this spark protein has been, you know, increased. So is it, is it meaningful in the animal model? Because we have to see in the clinic. Yes, this intravertebral disc, you know, which is present in the, you know, you know in, in our vertebrates, that is one protein is there, which is called as spark. The secreted protein, acidic rich in cysteine, is a protein uh, which is present in the intravertebral disc. So it is uh, the, major, uh, the major function of this uh, uh, spark protein is in influence bone remodeling as well as wound repairing in this, in this, during this process. So because of aging, you know, we, uh, a lot of people have, uh, might have uh, seen that uh, because of age, our low weight pain started and, and, and because of this fat protein, because of this protein, uh, deep, uh, methylation of this, uh, this uh, cyst phytosine. So that happens. As you see in the left side top of this anatomy, aging, this disc height index has been, as this, uh, age of the animal increases three months, seven months, and 15 months. You can see in the 15 months of the animal, 357 miles, this uh, this uh, this height index has been reduced. And they have seen that this uh, wild type, uh, the, the lower one, the F, F graph, this wild type and this uh, spark null mice, they have compared in the four month old mice, this compare. And they could see that there is a in the spark null mice, means the spark knockout mice, they have seen the significant reduction of the spark protein. That means as age degree age increases, the spark protein decreases, which is uh, present in the introvertible disc. I'll go to slide number 10. So uh, so how it is, how how yeah, we, we say that it's an intervertical disc of pain is there in the animals in the humans. So how we see in the animals? What is the is the parameters we have to take forward? So I in the, in the article they said about that uh, uh, the, the four uh, behavioral signs they have shown. So one is tail suspension phase, and then second one is sensitivity to cold stimuli, and the mechanical stimuli rotor rotor phase. So as you uh, might be knowing that in this tail suspension they say what they did is you know so they they measure the axial pain. What is axial pain? This is means the animal they have uh, upside down in the tail they have taped to the one side of the uh, table, and they measured the the total video of the, this one. So they see that the reaction to gravity induced strain along the spine was better. That uh, means that three months animals can withstand uh, upside down. Many the animal is fine; they don't have any issues. But in the old animals, in seven months and fifteen months old animals, they are unable to, or they are reluctant 
to stress their body, you know, because of pain. You know, they have a lot of pain in the intervertebral edges, so they have pain. So as age, age increases, they have a lot of pain in the uh, in their in their in their IVD. So that means that uh, uh, as age increases, the spark protein has been decreased. So that is the, another experiment which is called as cold adrenalinia. This is cold adrenalinia is basically a radicular pain. Means that means when uh, you know, in our uh, clinics, we have seen that uh, this one, this uh, sciatic nerve uh, pain, that means sciatica, what we call it. So that time, uh, the cold allodynia, that kind of, this is translating in the sciatica, but in animals, it is cold allodynia. So what they did in the experiment is, so they, do, they do put one drop of acetone, uh, which is close to 25 microliter, added, and they, they, they saw the flinching, licking, and bed biting measurements. So they could see that in that, this three months or mice, they didn't see any more times to our flinching or licking behavior, which is a pain measurement. But in the seven months and 15 months or mice, you could see that there is a significant increase in the flinching and licking behavior, which is clearly says that the spark protein has been reduced in the IVD. So, <clears throat> but you can ask me that in the, uh, in the graph D, why they didn't see in the mechanical allodynia? Mechanical allodynia is something different in, uh, you know, so what they did in the mechanical aerodyne is I'll, I'll go through very, 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 very fast. So there are, you know, you might be knowing that from the biosafe, a lot of voluntary filaments are coming. So there are uh, almost 16 voluntary filaments coming. You have to, uh, you have to, you have to select any eight uh, voluntary filaments. Like in our lab, we have seen that uh, 3.61, 3.81, 4.02, 4.01, like that, up to 5.18. There are, uh, you have to standardize that one according to your need in the filaments. So you have to go from the middle. Suppose 4.31 or 2 gram uh, filaments you are using. So if it is showing yes, positive response, this animal is positive to the start filament, then you have to go down. So if didn't, in the same case, if the 2 gram or the 4.31 uh, the filament didn't work, then you have to go to the next filament. Likewise, you have to go for any six you know, time uh, and measurement. So that uh, which we called as uh, the up-down method by Dixon and uh, uh, that another uh, formula is that you might be knowing that how to calculate this person limit that that may, that will come in the figure d 50 percent threshold uh, so in that they didn't see you can ask me the why they have seen in the cold aerodyna why they didn't see in the mechanical aerodyna because because the mechanical aerodyna is something you know you can see in the foot or foot regions like like diabetic retinal diabetic uh, neuropathy, neuropathy and some kind of snl in that kind of you can see but yeah, as it is a sciatic related problem, intravertebral disc related problem, so they didn't see any. That is a very major probate for this article. You can ask, uh, yeah, they have tested the rotor assay also in the same. Rotor assay we generally do for the you know, physical ability and uh, muscle relaxant as well as to see the adverse effect of any compound. You know? So this uh, um, uh, muscle relaxant effect is uh, in the rotor assay. You might again, I you, you might be knowing. I just I just for your con convenience, I just very uh, fast I'll tell that in that what we did is uh, you know this uh, rotor. Uh, that is a you know some ego basal or some IIT that is built up there. So the rotating the rotating rod will be there, and you have to fix the you know RPM uh, whether it will be clockwise or whether it will be anti-clockwise, and you have to fix, fix the uh, minutes also. So if the animal, suppose you have uh, five minutes, suppose uh, one minute to animal to stay in the rotor, or, so if your animal is absolutely fine, then that they can stay up to, you know, 60 minutes or, no, sorry, one minute or uh, five minutes, whatever. But if your animal is suffering from pain because of some reason, or your animal is, uh, you know, suffering from muscle relaxation, something because of some advanced drug effect, so there will definitely, certainly this animal will fall down, right? So if you can see in the latency, that that is, that is a, that if they shown in the, uh, graph E. That means in the three months, animals, the animal stays more and it will increase the month, seven months and 15 months, the animal will fall down. That means the latency is reduced. Okay. So I'll go to the slides number 11 as there is no question. So I, I, I assume that you know, we are in the right platform. So I, I was talking about DNA, DNA methylation, right? DNA methylation will create disease, but DNA demethylating agent is nothing but uh, they have tested it whether DNA demethylation again antagonist of that can you see increasing the spark? Yes, they have shown in the article that they were they, they purposefully they took the one year old mice, you know, which is edged. So they are expecting, they are assuming that they, they are sparkless. They given to these animals five other cytidine that is demethylene, that is D against methylation, right? So the five other cytidine, uh, which is high basis, they have injected 38 intravenous. 
and such chicken did 250% of IT for the overall local lockdown. So they saw that graph B is, is MRN expression is reduced, but uh, graph B after injection to the one-year-old one mice, there is a four-fold increase in chicken finger, you know, four-fold increase in the spark MRN protein in the five six years mice. So this is consistent with the hypothesis they took in the earlier that because of this pain or because of this down regulation of virus because of health related. So chronic LBP and uh, 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 this is the mechanism that stably down regulates spark expression are involved in the precipitating chronic pain. So this is all about DNA methylation very shortly. Now that's the next, next, uh, next I mentioned is histone modification. Okay, histone, this will be histone uh, methylation. So in that, what, uh, what they did is, uh, so as you know, that's the DNA, you know, DNA is uh, wrapped up uh, by this uh, uh, histone proteins, which is uh, four octamers, H2A, H2B, H3, H4, as in the figure you can see. Uh, can you, uh, yeah, I'm in the, can, okay, you people see my uh, figure, right? Okay, till now, I'm in uh, slides number, this is 11, yeah, okay, yeah. So in this, uh, this the histone tail are either methylated in the, because this end terminals are very highly vulnerable to uh, modification, okay? So which is uh, either lysine or arginine are there. So in the nine position or 27 positions, SPK9 or SPK57, this will be methylated. That means hydroxy methyl transferase uh, in presence of one methyl group that will be happening. And also acetyl is also there in the 20 positions. So I'll, I'll come to all this with a different example. Okay? So, so in this article, what they have found is, so uh, they have uh, come up with uh, this uh, IT surgery, so on the day minus seven, and uh, and they have seen that uh, this uh, day one, they have given these drugs as IRNA and uh, uh, SNL surgery also they did. And three days they continuously dosed, IT dosing, intrathecal dosing. And on day six, they have measured that this, uh, all the behavioral parameters. So here you can see this, they have used kyotocin. Yeah, this is another protein, yeah. This is soup protein. I, I came to the histone, from DNA methylation, though I came to histone methylation. So this is an inhibitor of histone lysine methyl transferase. Okay. So this SIRNA they have tested here is SUB39. So I'll, I'll in the letter, I'll call it SUB, SUV. So they have uh, dosed kyotocin for six days and this SUB for three days. So I'll come to the result part of what they achieved. So if you, they, if you see in the slide number 14, if you look at the A figure, so they can see after uh, final loss, after L uh, SNL, in uh, day three and day seven and day 14, you can see the Western blot mark. The three band is, you know, this uh, band uh, uh, three is uh, seven and 14 in comparison to histone 14, there is completely black uh, band is coming. So that means after uh, final loss, like I said, that particular soup protein has been goes up, shoot up, expressed more. So, so if you go to the next uh, bar, bar graph, so in the same that in the three three uh, three days and seven days there is there is a upregulation of uh, this protein, and also in the dorsal they they checked in the both uh, dorsal root ganglion as well as uh, dorsal horn. So they check they find that the the three and day seven there is a uh, upregulation up of uh, this soup protein. Also they but they checked as yes, SNL is talked about L5 and L6 ligation. They checked in the L4, definitely it will not be there, right? Because they have not touched L4, L4 nowhere in the SNL legacy. So, so they were checked in the L4 DRG. So they didn't, didn't see any difference throughout the days. Day three, day three, day seven, day four, the black is there. So means there is no difference they found at all. So percentage of soup in the letter, you can, they can see the immunohistochemistry by influ uh, double uh, influences. So they could see that in the uh, in the SNL, SNL uh, animals, the percentage of soup has been, uh, percentage of particular the soup protein has been goes up or has been expressed more in the SNL animals during the days, as days increases. So now they have uh, tested again this mechanical allodynia in this, in this model. So you can see they have uh, in the graph A, this, uh, this top one is same, no, no need to worry because that is, uh, means that is not operated. So they, they can achieve almost 24 grams of uh, this powdral uh, thistle to the uh, burn prep element. And uh, they, can, they can see that 2.5 microgram and uh, one microgram and two microgram has shown dose dependently. Uh, H. kyotocin is a reversal of uh, antagonist of soup. So that means that uh, protein has been antagonized by kyotocin. 
so they have tested in the uh, uh, with the latency b is in the similar to this hot plate in the hot plate you, you know as you know that uh, in the hot plate animals has to put in the you have to find out the, what is the concentration especially 55 degrees centigrade we in almost all the labs they use so in that you have to put the animals into the vessel and after that you have to select animals those who are you know on the control in your in your, in your selecting those selecting, uh, selecting uh, criteria then uh, you have to dose the animals and uh, after a few uh, few days uh, you know almost day 3 5 7 they have taken so you can see that cavitrin has been uh, dose dependent to reverse the uh, this this uh, latency uh, to the particular heat uh, uh, resource and uh, they have seen in the uh, d uh, d i will go to d directly because it is contralateral doesn't uh, have any surgery you know, part so it is uh, that dose have that uh, whatever the dose we have given cavitrin that they didn't have any effect on that that means uh, in the opposite part in the where disease is not created that doesn't have anything that means uh, that compound the cavitrin has shown dose dependently in the ipsi lateral side or in the disease side this is because of this expression on that particular protein too okay i will okay this is all about this biochemical and anatomical specificity specificity but further carry it out this srn knockdown strategy that further this srn i'll 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 tell you the srn that is sub and as of now i was talking about cavitrin now i'll talk about this sub whether this sub has been goza by srn or not as you can see this this animals this srn treated animals this i am i mean slide number yeah seven sorry 16 so this uh, a graph in the srna group there is a reduction in the uh, western blot uh, protein so first graph and in the second also you can see that uh, yeah, similarly that uh, sub has been in the both uh, the drg as well as the dorsal horn this uh, because of srna there is a reduction in the band with the percentage you see also there is a reduction density levels of decrease so yeah, the, there is epsilateral there is a, Uh, in the graph c the oitral latency also has been reduced by when they have taken srna uh, for continuously three days that dose is uh, the srna dose is just yes, certain doses yeah uh, 10 micromolar 10 micromolar they have twice they have dose by intrathecal so uh, so okay that is all about uh, that is all about the this contralateral they didn't see anything that means this srna 10 micromolar bid has gone dose dependently is increasing the uh, sub expression in this particular snl model so <clears throat> you come to uh, uh, this uh, graph h they have tested as for uh, uh, erk1 and erk2 protein there is no change in this pro total protein but this phosphorylation happens in the snl group as well as in the srna group means that those with uh, this srna has been goes down this black graph that see the black graph has been significantly reduced to the snl group that clearly says that this sub protein which is in uh, enhanced by this snl surgery has been uh, goes down by significantly inhibited by the srn dosing intrathecally so this is all about this uh, histone methylation now i will another sorry histone methylation sorry so the i will go to the next which i already said that this histone acetylation so histone acetylation is again this Turn indicates the there is addition of acetylation, right? So, what uh, uh, happening here is, you know, this uh, this uh, uh, this uh, chromatin, as you see, you see in the slide number seventeen, this is packed. This is this, this DNA histone protein is wrapped by tightly wrapped by this DNA helix. Okay, so they are tightly wrapped. So this in presence of histone acetylation, you know, this. chromatin are relaxed okay as you see in the diagram that this uh, chromatin will be relaxed and uh, which again uh, give the more transcription this transcription activity means that this is you know they will be very aggressive this protein will be uh, transcripted so there will be more kind of uh, protein will be expressed expressed so again in presence of adrex histone deacetylized this protein again this is already present there so in presence of adrex thus Again, that uh, again the DNA will be more tightly wrapped around the histone con histone uh, concept. So now this SDK, how this SDK inhibitors is doing there? So now the SDK inhibitors stop this process, stop that step. So what will happen is that whatever the 
protein has been disease protein has been generated it will be autophagic so this this uh, sdk is very interesting you know when it has come to market as a they be approved for this t uh, t cell lymphoma uh, that uh, that uh, yeah it is t cell yeah t cell lymphoma by fb approved two years back so that is because of this uh, that uh, enhances the autophagy okay? autophagy you might be knowing that is very uh, very beautiful uh, target nowadays because people are more uh, concentrated in the few uh, nobel laureates also they got prizes because of the few years uh, last year probably yeah. so this is the very charming and attractive area nowadays so this sdk inhibitors like trigostatin and uh, uh, saha uh, they are they they Uh, they remove the uh, acetyl groups and at the same time they increase the autophagy in the uh, animals so as i use the word autophagy so what is this autophagy means is okay i'll go to the next slide when it autophagy i have i'll i'll go to the autophagy what is autophagy flux the autophagy flux is nothing but this if you look at this graph this proteins are degraded proteins are also aggregated okay initiation of autophagy how starts this formation and expansion of this membrane this phagopore in the second second uh, second graph second uh, you know the round one so this this is a double membrane structure containing this phagopore this phagopore will be fused with the lysosome in the top so that create this auto lysosome this auto lysosome will automatically degrade it it is it is happening in a normal condition okay it is always going on in my in our body but in the disease conditions this autophagism will not be processed further that means that protein will be there that whether it is canine flex or that it is in the albuminous cases or in the protein in the some uh, and any oncogenes it will be it will be more mutated and it will be there only it will not be clear you know? it will not be clear so that will be that disease progression will be there more so i'll come to the earlier slides okay i under slides i was because as i use the word autophagy so i thought i just give you some flavor what autophagy is so you might be knowing but i thought i'll just give a, a small hint on that so the what in this day experimental procedure they did is on the day minus 6 means it just 6 uh, days back to dosing or uh, final surgery they took the baseline and day minus 5 it means intrathecal do- intrathecal uh, surgery they did uh, then day day 0 they did the final surgery so the day did they, they did prophylactic uh, treatment for the saha as well as the pamycin so from the day minus 5 to day 7 that means 12 days they dosing the um, this compound as well as vehicle as well as you know the paracetamol or saha whatever so this is the beautiful the peculiarity of this when you are going for srna in this the vehicle is something different sometimes in your pectamin which is very uh, help the is a vehicle help to enter to the you know spinal cord or or, or some uh, some uh, help in uh, the permeability of the uh, srna to the cells so that kind of uh, vehicle analysis but here they have in fact to gen uh, to dj to to sort dj solute uh, sorry uh, um, solute sol- soluble the uh, saha as well as rapamycin rapamycin you might be knowing that this is a you know, uh, autophagy uh, against uh, in any against this regulator so saha also they have uh, uh, doses in two different doses like 100 nanomolar and 200 nanomolar and in fact uh, they have tested for they have dosed for 12 days and the rapamycin they have tested in the 0.1 microgram or they have dosed for 12 days so that the intention is the prophylactically they dose so that they can see because these are overnight they will not happen uh, this proteins will not especially this uh, neuroproteins whatever uh, marker neuronal markers are very uh, it will not immediately all of a sudden it will not uh, you know, come up so it, it needs some days in, in fact sometimes some months uh, so to to express more no. so here that's why that is the reason why they have those for 12 days and they have uh, kept it for some more extension of 28 days they could then they, they did the necropsy uh, and they collect the isolate isolate means that side which has been uh, uh, submit did surgery external surgery so means left side if have done so left side will be isolate and the right side will be contralateral that means that side has not been touched untouched side so, so this is what the experiment procedure they have done and uh, what the test is to be a viral test so what we have seen is so after the surgery uh, on day 3 onwards you can see this green below means that is snl vehicle that means the animals are unable to uh, control the lower filaments even so even more than less than 2 gram you know less than 2 gram is their capacity so after this dose of uh, high dose of sahaya that means 200 nanomol uh, for 12 day dosing as well as this uh, uh, 
this is uh, yeah this is lower dose of plasma this is uh, blue and uh, the red the in between one the, the, this uh, red and the blue one they have some significant reversion of this percentage mpg but for, for the drug result to the vehicle to the snl animal that that clearly says that whatever the uh, neuropathic pain earlier how was uh, uh, which was you know recommended for uh, t cell lymphoma against uh, any neuropathy so that has been in the tested in the mechanical error so elodynia in the neuropathic pain and it is fantastic uh, result they have been in this article so they have tested uh, it uh, yeah so this uh, in this during this process uh, this beclin one expression which is a uh, is a, is a autophagy marker okay beclin remember that is a very new lc c1 light chain 1 and light chain 2 and beclin one has a very uh, very beautiful marker for this autophagy always so this beclin one um, this you can see that in the okay i'll in the a the western blot they have shown that this uh, lower dose of uh, Vehicle is in the third, right from the third, 60 kilo delta where it is written. That in the band is thin. That means that protein is expressed over there. And because of uh, this uh, high dose of SNL and low dose of uh, uh, PAH and high dose of PAH in the SNL, this is goes up. That means PAH is in encouraging. PAH is encouraging autophagy, which is a very beautiful marker, beautiful, you know, in the in neuropathic pain. i i'm not saying about cancer i'm not go to the cancer that is a different something the story is different over there but don't confuse it in the neuropathic pain okay so so uh, so autophagy induction increase after saha in this they have one in the uh, immunofluorescence staining also they have some that there is in you know this a in the saha group also that is the beclin one marker is going goes up okay so now i'll go to the lc3 table as i say the lc3 and lc32 uh, are the two markers Which are associated with the uh, autophagy. So, so what what uh, LC three one and two is? So LC three one is a uh, non-lipidated, and LC two is lipidated form of this autophagy. So this LC three one is a carrier, okay, and LC three two is a product from LC three one. That means L associated with the LC three two is more linked to autophagism, and in the in the process of autophagy. So if you look at this uh, Western blot from the A. This A band uh, in the uh, okay in the in the first four you can see that there is a band is there that means that is encouraging towards this uh, this uh, A to autophagy this is a carrier towards LC three two Y but in the next three band vehicle lesional in the disease condition it has been gone down because it it encourages the other autophagy markers like LC three two Y to be more expressed so. So, if you go to the next the below the below the line, you can see where the vehicle SNL has the band is less. It it encourages it it approaches more. It is as a carrier, you know, autophagy carrier is LC three I. So it it encourages the LC three Y to express more, which is fourteen kilo dalton in the below one. So you can see that in the vehicle groups or SNL groups and the, in the lower dose of high groups, it has been goes up. And they have shown in the graphical representation also. What they show is The relative expression of LC32 to LC31 ratio, they they have found, and they could see you can see that that goes up in the low uh, higher dose uh, of and lower dose of PAH group. So that means yeah, this is again a beautiful you know attractive uh, marker for the uh, very beautiful markers in the field of uh, autophagy, and in the influ immunofluorescence in the C bar. They have C graph. They have uh, they have some pictures that uh, how it has been this expression of the uh, after flow uh, this fluorescence has been taken by the with this protein particularly. Okay, so I'll go to the next slides, uh, which is okay. That time that we are we are saying till now that uh, uh, that whatever uh, this neuropathic pain we have increased the protein and we have decreased it by the siRNA technology or by the any anti anti. Antibodies or peptides, whatever. So, is it uh, that uh, mTOR pathway is playing anything in that? Because we have used in the Rapa in the, in the first table, we have seen we have uh, included Rapa myosin as an antagonist. So, is that make something sense? That uh, uh, is it following this mTOR pathway? So, this mTOR pathway, if you they have they have compared this higher dose of Saha as well as the uh, Rapa myosin dose. So, they could see in the in the you can see the graph in the A. So this red is coming down. That means these animals are uh, uh, final uh, surgery, final ligation surgery has been done, and this uh, blue and the uh, pink that is in the middle. 
they bought, that means the rapamycin dose as well as the high dose of uh, uh, saha they have compared head to head comparison yes this means the saha is working through the semtor pathway so is it that the semtor pathway is uh, is uh, is uh, is uh, inhibiting by this autophagy yes because you can see that is uh, if you look at that first uh, b b a the b figures this uh, protein uh, total protein for the center is uh, uh, goes up in this and uh, there has been uh, this phospho enter it has been uh, reduced by uh, both the rapamycin as well as uh, this high dose of saha groups so that means uh, there is a relative levels of mtor uh, in comparison to gap days in the b they have shown that means there is a reduction of this uh, uh, phosphorylation of this mtor protein in both the rapa group as well as ethanol groups that means when there is a autophagy uh, happening happening this we say a compound which encourages the autophagy means especially saha here over so this has been uh, sufficient to induce the autophagy and this ameliorated the pain uh, due to this ethanol conditions is been suppressing by this enter pathway uh, or this rapamycin compound in the stem nanomolar dose whatever uh, so probably i i guess this is my uh, this will be my last slides yes yes last slides so uh, thank you everyone and it is in fact a great you know time to talk to you guys uh, so uh, when dr sangeeta uh, called I and mean, so we are uh, discussing about this so i i when i heard about this i thought it's a very good opportunity because you know at least we all you know and during this pandemic uh, days we have to learn each other from everything from every aspect and uh, i immediately i i agree to that and uh, thank you everyone and uh, dr uh, all the members of this uh, great institute and thank you everyone so it is my mail id over here if you have any questions i am ready to and you know, i am happy to address that and in fact this is my mail id in fact so any questions i'll be uh, i'll be try to uh, to give you the solution at any point of time so i'll be happy to uh, address that and here is uh, i i our our uh, you know cms team uh, in jubilant so a uh, lot of uh, great scientists over here so Uh, we generally in a year we went we go to somewhere in the nearest places some some of this uh, hill station or some water park and we enjoy it there and it's, it's, yeah so i believe that when i is replaced with we so even illness becomes wellness so let us work together so this will be helpful for everyone so thank you everyone who have joined this webinar and uh, i'm i waiting for any questions yeah thank you thank you sir uh, for this informative seminar i request now dr sangeeta gupta to start with the question and answers from the audience sure hello yeah hello yeah, yeah i'm i'm yeah. online yeah thank you sir for it was yeah. a very wonderful talk and you covered all the basic things uh, which should be we should be aware of and uh, you gave a very uh, good uh, uh, look like uh, uh, the industrial scenario what exactly is going on so you covered a lot like uh, uh, the, the different models like uh, for uh, neuropathic pain like snl psnl ccl and uh, the various epigenetics uh, like uh, uh, like dna methylation then histone modification and various Autoph uh, autophagy biomarkers like baclin one, LC three one, and LC three two. So you are given a very uh, basic things which are there, which are involved in the uh, neuropathic pain with respect to epigenetics. Uh, so I would like to thank you for such a wonderful talk. Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. So I just want to ask you, sir, is there any uh, like uh, bar uh, market uh, like uh, in, uh, this uh, any drug which has come uh, like all the things which you have discussed is is related to experimental point of view. Yes, yes, yes. So yes, yes. is there any success in this? Any uh, success means uh, they are uh, uh, in the yes, yeah, very good questions. Uh, so as far as uh, DNA methylation is uh, concerned, there is. Uh, okay, I I I'll in fact the compound name I I could have uh, put in. I I I'll go to guy. I'll, I'll get back to you. Yeah, I'll get to you. It's very good. One of the one of the questions. So DNA acetylation I know this uh, tricostatin as well as this saha and a few other compounds are also in the market. But uh, as far as uh, DNA 
asking is true guy no but uh, that uh, they have uh, some other compounds also there like that uh, uh, they are similar to that yeah i'll i'll get back to you yeah i'll, I'll definitely I'll, uh, i'll i'll give you the drugs name definitely yeah this is a good question yeah. okay so i would like to uh, thank you dr shukar yeah, yeah, yeah. for such yeah, a yeah, informative yeah. talk and yeah, i would you. like to thank our hoi for giving us this platform and i would like to thank uh, shruti ma'am also for helping me in conducting this webinar so thank you all i thank you all participants also for joining this webinar yes. and oh, yeah. alam sir also for uh, helping out throughout this webinar thank you all yeah yeah thank you